Hi everybody and welcome to the Lotus Guru here on YouTube. I hope you're all well and staying safe. Thanks for all your comments I've had so far and your subscriptions. Some of the comments I've had so far are from Luke Broad. Do an episode on air conditioning. Well, I'll do my best, but I'm a guru, not a magician. Anthony J says hi from the Southern Lotus Club in New Zealand. Hi there guys, down under. Nick Mitchell, any anecdotes about the M250? Yes, Nick, there will be some about the M250, I can assure you. Right, so this part is all about my time in the service garage from 1988 to 1999. So why did I leave the production line? Well, basically, I got bored. After doing it for about a year, as anyone knows that works in production, knows that it gets quite boring after a while, and I'd like a bit more variety. Previous 17 years to Lotus, I'd worked in various garages, doing various cars and various things on cars. I used to build and race my own Mini, so I liked a bit of variety in my working life. So luckily for me, a job came up on the notice board at Lotus. It was for a service fitter in Factory 3 in the Lotus service garage. Now a service fitter is what we now call a technician. So I applied for the job. And I got an interview with John Souter, the Lotus Service Garage Manager. The interview went quite well, I think. And it must have done because I got the job, which was really good. Good thing about this job was it was a high grade, so it meant more money, which was nice. Now, what was the service garage? It was housed in a building called Factory 3, which has an interesting history. Originally built by George Wimpy and Company Limited, a famous British house builder, as part of RF Hethel Station 114. It is a T2 type hanger for you hanger racks out there. Here are the B24s of the 389th Heavy Bomb Group were serviced and maintained. The US Air Force left in May 1945. After the US Air Force departed, it was used by Mustang 3s of 303 and 316 squadrons flown by Polish pilots and RAF Spitfire Mark 16s of 65 and 126 squadrons. RAF Hethel was declared non-operational and closed in 1948. Colin Chapman bought Hethel in about 1964. He started building Factory 1 and in 1966 the whole Lotus operation moved up from Chesson in Hertfordshire. Three of the hangars were still standing and one of them became Factory 3 and that was used for different various projects. One of these was Moonraker JCL Marine Limited, building Moonraker boats. Yes, Lotus built boats. And why not? They were made from fiberglass. There was also the DeLorean project in the late 70s and early 80s. There's books and films made about this, so I won't say no more about that. So sometimes after, those projects moved out and the service department moved in. We took over the whole building, so it was a whole of Factory 3. We had a workshop in there with six technicians plus me. Now, I started there in 1988. But in the workshop there was Ken Ingray, there was Bob Childs, Tony Tails, Gary Krask, Andy Blackman and Nigel Pill. I mean, he was looked after by a foreman called A.D. Fawkes, which was a top bloke. We also had a general runabout, general hand called Brian Parry, who used to wash the cars, deliver parts, pick customers up, stuff like that. We also had our own laminating shop where body sections and Elan body shells were made by a team of three guys called Mick, Steve and Terry. We also had our own body repair person, Fred Warren. Now Fred Warren, or as we used to call him, Fiberglass Fred, was an absolute ace with fiberglass repairs. I've seen him cut a car in half, bond a new section on, complete end of it, and at the end of it, believe you me, you could not see the join. He was an absolute magic wizard with fiberglass. We had a one paint shop with two painters. We've got Paul Sexton and Tim Chapman, I believe it was. I'm not really sure. So Tim, if you're watching, I apologize if I got your name wrong. 
Upstairs in the mezzanine offices, we had large offices with all, all the admin staff that looked after the whole service department. We had the field service engineers based up there, plus we had our technical services. Now technical services was run by two guys at the time. A guy called Dave Massey, who's the senior technical author. He wrote all the service notes, service bulletins, owner's handbooks, any literature to do with service. And we also had another guy who was the illustrator called John Hosler. Now John Hosler was a really good artist. Not only did he do all our illustrations, he used to do prints like the two that I've got behind me of the uh, Lotus Formula One cars. And he was a really, really good artist. A lot of respect for John. Um, he done my leaving card when I left and went to Australia. So he was a top bloke. Here's a picture of me struggling with an Esprit fuel tank. They were a bit like doing a Rubik's Cube. You turn it one way, then another way, swear a lot, and then it would just drop in. Very frustrating. I was only smiling for the camera. And in this picture, Gary Cross and Andrew Blackman are putting a crash repair Esprit back together. Incidentally, Gary Cross still works at Lotus. Now, the unique thing about Gary, well, one of the unique things about Gary, is that Gary actually started at Lotus in 1971. So next year, in 2021, he will have been at Lotus for 50 years. I believe he's the longest serving member of staff in Lotus history. Good friend of mine, we worked together a lot and was field service engineers. We went out to various different jobs here and there, to Japan, to uh, Monaco, places like that. And he's a good lad and he really knows his stuff, but he's a bit like me now, getting a bit long in the tooth. So in the service garage, we did pretty much everything on Lotus cars. Mainly Esprit, Excels, but the odd Europa and Elan. This includes servicing all the director's cars, some press cars and warranty work. We carried out engine and gearbox reconditioning, as well as short motor builds for the parts department. We carried out all types of crash repairs as a lot of the insurance companies at the time wanted them done at the factory because generally at the time many body shops did not have the experience of fiberglass repairs like we did. We also did PDIs on new cars. Now as I mentioned earlier in the previous video I believe I PDI'd the car that went on to star in the film Pretty Woman. I'm sure not 100% sure, that I took the rear number plate plinth off, signed my name on it, then put it back on. Now, I believe I did it, but I'm not really sure. This car was looked after when it went to the United States by Dave Simkin, who is now National Technical Manager, Field Service Engineer for Lotus Cars USA. He's pictured here on the right with TJ, who has recently been appointed as Field Service Engineer in the eastern states of the US. I've been out to the states a few times to run training courses and work with both of them. Both good mates and they both know their stuff. During the early 90s, all of the parts that were housed in Factory 3 were moved to Vauxhall Luton's warehouse. It was part of a restructure and of course then two thirds of the building became available for other projects. It became the production line for the Lotus car on Opel Amiga. The cars were completely stripped and resprayed in Imperial Green. That was the only colour available. The engines were heavily modified and fitted with twin turbos. A 6 speed Jeff gearbox was fitted and an LSD and large AP racing brakes. The interiors were all trimmed in Connolly leather. A very luxurious car and for a while the fastest five seater in the world. In around 1991, it was decided after a business restructure to close the service garage. There was quite a few redundancies. Some staff were kept on to do other things, but a lot of people were made redundant. It was a sad day for all of us. Factory 3 carried on with the production of the Lotus Colton until production ceased. It was then used for various other projects such as the Skipton. It was also earmarked for the production of the new Esprit in 2010 during the Danny Bahar time, but as we know, that never happened. It is now home to the Lotus Trim Shop 
and carbon fiber seat manufacturer and just recently has had the new Lotus Evaya line installed. Now after the close of the service garage, several of us were kept on just to keep things going within the factory. We moved into a small workshop in the center of the test track. And there, Gary, Tony, AD, Brian and myself worked there. It was an interesting place to work and it's got a pretty interesting history as well. This workshop also has World War II origins and used to be used as a hangar for the airfield's small single engine runabout aircraft. It was later used to house Colin Chapman's twin engine JPS Cessna. Gary and I probably spent most of our time trying to rectify water leaks on M100 Elans. Now the Elan, as good a car as it was, did have a reputation for leaking water seals. So there was a bit of a joke at the factory if anyone carried out a PDI on any car, it usually stands for pre-delivery inspection. Now the Elan got the little moniker of a PDI standing for please drain interior. It used to leak a lot of water. The later cars were better, the earlier ones were a real job to do and Gary and I spent many many weeks trying to stop the water getting into the cars. Now being in the middle of the test track was good because we used to see everything that went out on the test track as well as helicopters landing right in front of the workshop and aircraft arriving and departing along the main straight. I once had a ride in a car that was called SID which was stood for Structural Isolation Dynamics. Now this car although it looked like an Esprit wasn't an Esprit it was a completely fantastic car one of the engineers, Richard Herdwell, I believe it was, took me around the track in it. And all I can say is it was phenomenal. I've never been in a car that stuck to the track as much as Sid did. On many occasions, the Lotus Formula One team, Team Lotus, would turn up at our workshop to shake down some of the Formula One cars. They moved in. We just stood there doing nothing. And we let them do their thing. It was really interesting watching the guys working on the Formula One car. We got to meet many of the Team Lotus drivers like Mika Hakkinen, Alex Zanardi, Pedro Lamy and Johnny Herbert. Now Johnny Herbert was by far the funniest. He kept stealing my Kit Kats from our tea room fridge. Little bugger. So that's it for part two. The next one will be part three obviously. I'll be talking more about my time as field service engineer for Lotus cars. It'll be an interesting ride. So until then, please stay safe and take care. See you then.